Excellence Pretty Short. We're going to talk about two topics. <coughs> Number one is correlation for <coughs> finite energy signal. Then we talk about band limited Y noise. Then I'm going to show uh, some examples. So previously we talked about Power signal, right? We have correlation. So this is O2 correlation uh, for energy signal, for, uh, for, for power signal, for and signal, the equation will be a little different. <clears throat> so here, yeah. power signal, right, we have this normalized by P, right? The boundary for your input uh, is minus T over 2 to T over 2. However, for end signal, auto-collision definition is, is over here. Uh, so we still have one signal, right, another one, one signal and the signal is a shift. However, we are going to evaluate the entire time limit. So from minus infinity to what we call this one, O2 relation. So very close, very close to power signal definition. So if we have more than one signal, two signals, right, we call it cross correlation. One signal can get another one with a shift. Okay, without the normalized by T and my boundary change to minus infinity. Okay, so we have autocorrelation and cross-correlation. Remember, uh, just in your uh, just in your exam that we have uh, this this one they transform as. This is my F T right? and signal. This is my F omega. How about rectangular signals or correlation? We know it's triangle, right? It's triangle. It's triangle. Um, so maybe something like this, right? P over tau. What is this one for your transform? If you can check your table, you get sink, right? Square. Yeah, please double check this one. Just look at your table. So RF, this is my RF tau, right? This is my S F omega. They are pair of the transform. So RF tau, power special density, uh, and this version they are pair of free transform. This is F omega magnitude square. So this is example, just, just show one example. Uh, we can connect 
collision and specificity by using Fourier transform, no matter if it's the power signal or energy signal. Okay, any problems, questions so far? Okay, now I'm going to talk about the second important topic today, uh, noise, bandwidth noise, and uh, bandwidth of system. Any problem for energy signals? Okay, we showed this picture before, right? So bandwidth, bandwidth is something like this. Right? Bandwidth is a very useful, very expensive resources. And uh, if you want to use bandwidth options, <coughs> uh, who pay more, uh, who can use this bandwidth? So this is a really, really important topic for communication engineers. Uh, and last time we also mentioned, right, uh, most of the good bandwidths are taken and uh, paid by different users. However, there are still some like, free free bandwidth you can use. Uh, we call it ISM, right? For example, 2.4 gigahertz, and also 5 gigahertz, 995 megahertz. So uh, in the trial, scientific and medical, we call it ISM band. In those ISM bands, free, you can just use your device in this band. You don't have to pay. And, uh, for example, right, uh, 4.2 uh, minus line, right? Wi-Fi we use 2.4 gigahertz and 5 gigahertz. Uh, Bluetooth, but right, Bluetooth, your headset also use uh, ISM band or RFID, uh, biometric bio passport, and uh, smart, right, those smart card, smart, uh, Credit card, right? Without, without, uh, you can just use quite a signal, right? To read your card and the charge from the card. Uh, and also, micro, this is not a communication system, right? But this is a huge, big interference for our Wi Fi signal. So, if you are operating your microwave, very likely, right? You are going to get some, some influence. And, uh, did I talk about the story? So several years ago, a company called uh, Petroni, they, they, they build and uh, they sell uh, social analyzers. So they bought a, a big one, their newest one, and show us how, how good right, is the device. And they use an uh, antenna just that connect to with the pole. And we find right, pretty much the band is pretty cool. very, very, uh, very, very noisy. And uh, uh, suddenly there is a peak around 2.4 gigahertz. And that is somebody is operating the microwave downstairs. Okay, any problem, questions? So uh, when you are uh, doing your single design project, right, if you want to do some computer systems, uh, Many students consider you this free band right, because you don't have to pay. However, free means everybody wants to use it, right? So very challenging. We don't say it's bad, very challenging. So many, many noises and other users right, because of interference. Okay, so now we talk about noise, right? Talk about noise. So noise will give us the second definition for bandwidth, for bandwidth. Okay. Last lecture we talked about general noise. Here we have a specific one we call Y noise. So what is Y noise? The power spectral density of the signal is a constant. It's a constant. So it cross all your spectral domain and almost the same amplitude. We call this kind of noise Y noise. And the thermal noise in your circuits can be viewed as Y noise, very wide band and pretty much the same amplitude at every frequent component. So if my system operating in a range, right, in a, in a band, so in this <coughs> band, we are going to be curious, right, what will be the, the noise. So in this band, 
expand with B, the noise in this band, if we have Y noise, very easy, right? We just integral my power spatial density across this range, we get noise power. So noise power is related with how wide is the band and related with density, right? How powerful is, is the noise? So we want to know, right? Noise go into my system. So in chapter five and six, we talk about a lot more details. Here, just give you some hint. A signal pass a system that we view them as LTI system. So here's input. My noise goes through my system, right? This is all we are really, really be interested in. Uh, very interested in this power. This is the output of your noise power, right? So this one. According to previous lecture, this one will be input signals, power, spatial density, time, your magnitude response, a uh, magnitude square of the magnitude response of the system. And if we plug in this one into uh, how can I calculate power? So this is this thing. This is power. This is power. And for y noise, make our calculation much easier because as n omega is a <coughs> constant, right? So the power of y noise only related with what kind of system it is, also the input noise power. Okay. Then we talk about a uh, very popular noise. Uh, I believe you learned that in your 210 class or the physics class. So thermal noise is always there, right? it's always there. If we get temperature higher than the absolute zero, then right? there's thermal noise. We cannot avoid it, we have to deal with it. So um, thermal noise is produced as a result of those uh, electrons right? moving around and uh, higher temperature higher power of thermal noise. Uh, so the power of thermal noise related with resistance value, bandwidth, and also temperature. So just, uh, so this is the voltage, this is the, the current. Not, yeah, we, we just follow it. 
um, not very clear, but we just uh, follow it, and the next slide will show the picture. Much easier to understand. So this bandwidth is bandwidth of a uh, ideal low pass filter, and this filter is a special filter. How special it is? This special this special low pass filter will give you the same noise power as the real system you are dealing with. Uh, so let's look at the picture. Okay, so I have a real system. That, for example, this is my system, the solid lines, my system. I can define this system's bandwidth as an ideal low pass filter. They share the same power. So means the area under this dashed line, this rectangular, will be the same as the shaded area after my, my curve. So it means they share the same power, but different shape, right? So they call the bandwidth of this ideal low pass filter, Pn, the noise equivalent bandwidth of my real system. Real system. This is a real one, right? This is ideal one. And we use ideal one's bandwidth to express my real system bandwidth. The condition is they have the same power. The so the black one should be the same as the black one. So here's the definition. Next slide, we are going to give the equation. How can we calculate this P e of n? How to use it in one example? Okay, so B N, my nometer. This is my real system. That's real system <coughs> frequency transfer function or my system response. This is my h omega. Here, actually, will be the ideal low pass filters spectrum. So. Yes. This system bandwidth, right? Number one, minus three d bandwidth. Okay, number two, uh, equivalent noise bandwidth. So, any thought for the, the question itself? Now we <coughs> measure how can we find the minus three d bandwidth. Define minus 3 divided as omega 1. Omega 1. So. <coughs> okay. Minus 3 
PV bandwidth according to previous lecture, we know the power at this point, omega 1, should be half of your highest power. So this one compared with the highest power, we get half. We get half. So we can write down. So 1 over square root of t because of the square. And this is the highest power, right? The highest power. Now I'm going to substitute. Hmm? Which one? Uh, you got the one half. Yeah, one half, one half. Because minus 3 dB means power at this point is half of this point. So the, the power compared with this power will be half. OK. Um, My system, right? This point, this is my system, and the highest point is omega equals zero. Right? When omega equals zero, I get one. I get one. So, okay. So h omega one is one over square root of two. Now, Divided uh, in terms of hertz, divided by two pi, around 0.159 hertz. So, so for this uh, low backwards locus filter, my minus 3D bandwidth is 0.159 hertz. So this is part one. Any problem? Any question? So I show a little more details. Okay, now we I try to noise. Okay. Noise this, like part two, part two. We're going to use the equation for this one. Is, 
So we also find equivalent noise bandwidth. bandwidth. This one is a little wider compared with minus three bandwidth. So both definitions are, are popular. Are popular. Uh, you can choose the, uh, the one you feel. Okay, so we use this example to show how can we calculate a given thing, a given system's uh, bandwidth. Generally, right? Generally, this is my highest. When my power drop to half, right? So this is square root. This is my h omega. So here, my omega equals zero. So this is the highest. When I drop to half, I call this is my b minus three db. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm going to show one more example, then we will summarize this chapter. Okay, another example for how can we use correlation in real uh, in real project. <coughs> so we use correlation to calculate, not calculate, to measure the, the temperature. temperature. Uh, so we know, right, those, those guns are on better, better shape right, when they are firing, uh, can be very, very hot. And the temperature is important. We do not want to be overheat, right? Overheat. However, where this temperature is really hard, right? The general thermometer will be destroyed by uh, the high temperature. So what can we do? Uh, what people do, right? So this is a project uh, years ago we did with uh, IMS, a small company uh, in North Aurora. So we use ultrasound to measure the temperature. Now we talk about how we use ultrasound correlation to find the temperature. So why don't we use correlation? So we are interested in, right? So we add a transducer. Transducer, right? Yeah. Uh, so an ultrasound transducer. So this one will generate an ultrasound. When it hit, the other side will go back. The transmitting speed is proportion to temperature, right? temperature. So we know how long it is, right? If we can measure the time difference between the transmit time and receive time, so I've got T1 and T2. If we can measure the transmitting time, we are going to figure out how hot it is, how hot it is. Now, I have a signal transmitted here, right? For example, I have a signal transmitted here. And I have a signal received from the reflection. 
How can I find the, the different? Mm -hmm. How does this work with the code can be used? I don't know. They just give me the signals. They just give me a signal, ask me to find the correlation. And how cold it is, how hot it is, I don't know. Yeah, I really don't know. So several hundred, maybe, maybe even higher than that. Ultrasound that you measure in the solid part of the barrel or like the sound with the air? Like no, only I, I believe only through the, the material. Okay. This is metal. Okay. Yeah, only the metal. So the, the only thing I I look at the signals, right? I don't know the transmitter. I don't know the, the transducer at all. And I don't know the, the, the those guns. I don't know those guns. So we have signals, right? We have signals. Okay, this is the sound, the uh, transmitted ultrasound signal. And we get a received one, get a received one. Uh, amplitude drop a lot, right? And we try to find delta tiers, we try to find the difference. Okay, so we kind of in large, right, amplified the NS, we can find this signal, some kind of similar to the signal we transmit, however, uh, noise, right, a huge noise added to it. If you just compare those two, <coughs> it will be hard for us to find the time difference. So we use cross correlation, right? Okay, so when we have the cross correlation, it's kind of periodical, see, because my signal transmitted is periodical, right? So the highest, uh, Peak is my time delay, my time delay, and uh, uh, as you remember, they mentioned the, the accuracy of this temperature pretty high. And so we use correlation method to find the peak. This peak give us the time difference. Time difference give us how hot it is. How hot it is. Okay. Uh, so last last chapter we talk about free track. Free track can be used in many different areas. Correlation can be used in communication, signal processing, medical, image processing. So many, many different areas we can use correlation. Okay. Now I'm going to summarize this chapter four. And when you come back uh, after spring break, uh, we'll be talking about new materials. So chapter four, we talk about two important things, right? Spectral density and correlation. Okay, so I have a table that right, compared with those two important things for different signals. What <laughs> we have power signal and energy signal. So they have different spectral density, they have different correlation. Uh, so Power signal, then energy. What is spectral density for two different two catalogs of signals? So for power signal, we have power 
this vector density S F omega, right? So S F omega is my power spectral density. And for end signal, we have energy spectral density F omega magnitude square. So for F omega, right? Is either if we can find free transform, we get e, uh, ESD, right? ESD. For power spectral density, we introduced two methods, right? Two methods. we show examples how can we calculate given power signals power spectral density. <coughs> okay. If you're not very clear, I go back to those examples. Now once we know spectral density we can find either power or energy based on density. So for power signals, power okay. Integral of your S F omega we get power. We get power. Here, yeah. same thing, right? Same thing. energy spectral density, we have energy, we have energy, okay? Any problem, any <coughs> questions so far? Okay, now two different signals pass and Linear in time time inverses LK system, we can we want to find the output. Right, the output. So for power signal, S G omega is S F omega time your magnitude response square. Uh, My output and the signals <coughs> spectral density will be input time still your trans function magnitude as well. We, we also <coughs> show examples right how to find uh, S G omega and uh, G omega magnitude square. So this is signal pair system. Okay, now we talk about correlation. Right, correlation. Correlation and the cross correlation. So auto correlation. Okay, for power signal, we have signal conjugate, right? Signal with a shift. Evaluate the integral and normalize by t. Like here we call it auto correlation for power signal. Okay, for end 
signal the equation. Very, very close. It's very, very close. Just we don't need this limit. T goes infinity. So for power signal, for end signal, you can remember the two equations right together. So they're they're close. Okay, cross correlation. Okay, so cross correlation, we have two signals. So instead of only R F T, we have F G. Okay, so uh, FT conjugate G plus top, we get cross correlation. Calculation for uh, energy signal. Okay, last one. Uh, correlation and special density, they are related. They are related. R F tau. Okay, R F tau, S F omega, they are a pair of free transform. Same thing here. So low case R F tau. And uh, you energy specificity, they are a pair of Fourier transform. Yeah, this is spectral density. Yeah, this is spectral density. And this is also spectral density. Okay, so correlation and spectral density, they are uh, a pair of the transform. So for noise, right, we, we care about more about the uh, statistic parameters of performance. So mean value of mean square. AC component that R M S value. So we talk about mean value for noise, mean square value, AC power, uh, AC component, R M S value. We use examples to show how can we calculate different things about noise. Okay, and we have a even special noise because white noise. Okay, so for white noise, this signals power special density is a constant, it's a constant. We call this kind of noise uh, white, uh, white noise. Your operating system. 
So we have band limited wine was outside your within bandwidth it doesn't affect uh, your system. Okay, the last one they call it noise. and the cross correlation. Remember, we have about six. We have six different properties. Okay, so that's all. 